Thank you for joining us today on Behold Truth. Today we will begin our study through Corinthians 1st and 2nd, uh, beginning in 1st Corinthians chapter 1, of course. Uh, I'd like to pray before we begin, Lord, we come to you this day, Lord, and we seek to know the truth of your word, that it may be enriched and indwelling within us, Lord, that we may find it extremely useful and beneficial in this day as this growing darkness approaches. Uh, please help I pray in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Lord, that we may be pleasing in your sight due to the knowledge of your word and of your being, your resurrection, Lord, that we may have faith and belief in you and your finished work upon the cross. I pray this in your name, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, what was going on in Corinth? So, the Jews had been expelled from Rome. And I think that um, uh, Aquila and Priscilla had found their way to Corinth, which was the capital of Greece at that time. And the Apostle Paul had found himself uh, there at a later date. Um, there were some things, the Isthumian Games, um, similar to what we have with the Olympics today. So that would have required tents. Apostle Paul and uh, uh, Aquila and Priscilla being tent makers. So their profession through that, they could you know, have gainful employment during this time. Uh, this was also a place where there was an isthmus, uh, which saved, uh, by their, their method of unloading ships, rolling them up on, you know, logs and, you know, getting them across this isthmus and reloading them. It, it saved, um, a lot of shipwrecks, uh, that otherwise would have had to go around this region, you know, saved them a substantial uh, amount of time and danger by being able to, you know, make this shortcut. Today there's a, a canal there that was finished, I think, in the 1800s. So a uh, lot of things going on here, and some would rate this city's population to nearing a million at this time. So a uh, place for... Uh, lots of things to come together, and this was the place that there were some believers. So let us begin with this uh, giving thanks, the thanksgiving to God. And this is as the apostle has written, and I give thanks to my God at all times for you, for the favor of God to the one being given to you in Christ Jesus, that in everything you were enriched in him, in all word, and in all knowledge, as the testimony of the Christ was firmed up in you. Now, let's look at, at this word, firmed up. The Apostle Paul speaks, Bebeo, to stabilitate, um, prop up, you know, hold something up, uh, uh, erecting something such as a building. The, the Apostle Paul speaks of things as much as Christ did in Matthew chapter 16. Uh, the Lord said, I will build my ecclesia. Uh, we're speaking of building here, and many would say, oh, well, well, Jesus was a carpenter. We can understand it. Well, that's it's a possibility. It's not likely, though, because that word in Greek is tekton, and it means artisan or craftsman, uh, more akin to a architect is uh, where I would place it. There weren't a lot of things uh, potentially in ancient um, Israel built of wood. You know, most things were built of stone. So, and the, the temple work was going on. So, how is Christ firmed up in them? Through the building up of faith, through truth, through the giving of these things that were given as knowledge to the Apostle Paul, so that you be not lacking in not one favor. So we need to understand these things, awaiting 
the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this text comes straight from the Greek, and it's been put into English, even with the word order as we see here, which came from the, the Greek, the Koine Greek, which was the common language of the time. So this is not an English translation. It shows the words in English. Okay, but behind this is each word in Greek. So this is going to differ from what you see in the, the King James or the ESV or any other version because this comes straight from the Koine Greek. And we cannot get any closer to the truth of the word than this uh, because this is exactly how it was written. This comes straight from the, you know, from the evidentiary uh, manuscripts that we have available today. So this is the New Testament in Greek. The trustworthy is God through whom you were called, Kaleo, to call properly aloud, into a fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Come to a very important thing here. And I appeal to you, brethren, through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you should all say the same thing. And there should be no splits among you, but that you should be readying yourselves with the same mind and with the same opinion. So if these manuscripts are subjective, subject to one's own private interpretation, subject to one's own belief, uh, then we have a problem. And today, it, it is that way. How many divisions or splits are there, even in the local assemblies, of what should be like-minded believers? That's exactly what the apostle is saying here. With the same mind and of the same opinion. Based upon one truth. There are not many truths. There is one empirical truth. And only one. So, if you independent, fundamental, free will Baptists, will they read Romans chapter 9? Will they believe in predestination? No, they deny those things. They think that you know, Adam and Eve fell only to their hurt. They did not die spiritually, and through their own volition, they can crawl to salvation, denying the power and the working of the Holy Spirit. You know, the, the Calvinists... Do they believe that you know, God just is who he says he is by what he says? That all who are thirsty should come and drink? You know, they, do they think that only these that are elect? So you, you have these problems in divisions, denominations. They don't all believe the same things. Thomas Jefferson didn't, he denied the virgin birth, cut it out of his Bible. His Bible looked like a screen door when he held it up. And you know, many deny the deity of Christ. You know, they think, you know, maybe this is, uh, he was a good person or a prophet or, or whatever. And certainly he was those things, but he was God in the flesh, God incarnate. So, we should all be of the same opinion and should believe the same thing. But even at this time, for it was made manifest to me concerning you, my brethren, by the ones of Chloe, that there are stripes among you. One says, I'm of Paul, I of Apollos, I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Has Christ, the Christ, been portioned was Paul crucified for you, or in the name of Paul were you immersed? And he's going to say, who are these? I give thanks to God that not one of you I immersed except Crispus and Gaius, that not any should say that in my name he was immersed. And I immersed also the house of Stephanus, the rest I do not know if any other I immersed. Four. Christ did not send me to immerse, but to announce good news. Uh, here we use the word evangelize, euangelizo, not in the wisdom of word, lest 
the cross of the Christ should be an empty work. So it's not in the wisdom of the word. So what is it? To announce good news through the foolishness of the proclamation that this tecton from this twice conquered little nation, he's the only one true God and we have Zeus. You know, we have all these other gods in our nations and you're saying that this is the only God? It's through the foolishness of the gospel that some would be saved, that they would believe. For the word, the one of the cross, to the ones indeed perishing, is more honestness. Now, this is the word that is used in the Greek. You know, and if you can't stand, honestly, if you can't stand being called a moron, I have some serious questions about you. I will gladly be called a moron by God that he may lift me up and give me his wisdom. And if you can't be humbled in a base that he may lift you up, then you're filled with pride. Because the Apostle Paul, what did he say about his infirmities? I will gladly boast in them. For when I am weak, then I am strong. If we are dull, if we are slow, we need to come to this word. For we are morons. I am a moron according to the word of God. I don't know everything, never will. And every time I read it, I see something new because it is the living word. For the word, the one of the cross, to the ones indeed perishing, it, it was moronishness to them. They're not saved. They rejected it. That's, that's the most ignorant thing I have ever heard come out of anybody's mouth is what they would say. But to the ones being preserved, to the believers, to us, is what the apostle saw, is saying here. It is the power of God. <clears throat> For it has been written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. And the understanding of the experts, I will disregard. Where is the wise then? Where's the scribe? Where's the debater of this eon? Did not God make moronish the wisdom of this world? What does the wisdom of this world say? You know, uh, how many people believe in evolution? Darwin. And it's ridiculous. It, it takes more faith to believe in evolution than it, than it does to believe that God just created it all. He had the power to do it. How much more faith does it take to believe that a lightning strike and a, a oozing pond of bacteria created the first living cell and it was able to, through its own sheer will and determination, rise up to the point that it had a equal opposite counterpart that it could reproduce with. And then it made all these other creatures. That's ridiculous. Who would, who would believe it when it's described in such context? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. Nicodemus, Jesus comes to him. He's the intellect of Israel. The teacher is what Jesus calls him. The definite article, the highest intellect in all of Judaism. And he says, you must be born from above, Anathan, by God. You know, we translate, as, translate that as being born again. And it, what does he, how can these things be? He doesn't understand it. His intellect will not span this fixed gulf between flesh and spirituality. The Lord says it's like the wind. It blows where it wants to. You see the effects, but you don't know where it came from or where it's going. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Don't marvel at what I'm telling you. If you don't understand this, Nicodemus, how are you going to understand if I tell you heavenly things? And no one has gone up to heaven except the Son of Man who is in heaven. You know, Christ is still sitting there enthroned by the Father, and yet he's here at the same time, according to what the Scripture says. And how can Nicodemus understand that? I have been in heaven, I'm on the earth, and I'm in heaven at the same time, is what he's trying to explain to Nicodemus. But God thought well through the moronishness of the proclamation to deliver the ones believing. Through the foolishness of preaching, some would believe. 
the foolishness of preaching, the proclamation that, you know, it takes a childlike faith to believe and understand. Uh, the intellects don't get it. You know, it's more honestness to them. Since both the Jews ask for a sign and the Greeks seek by wisdom. You know, what's their barometer? Uh, what would happen when the Jews, Oh, Lord, we would ask that you would show us a sign. Or would they even call him Lord? Probably not. Show us a sign that we may believe. And no sign's going to be given unto you but that of Jonah who was in the belly of the fish for three days. He said, Jonah died in there and was resurrected. That's the sign that I'm going to give you because I'm going to be in the earth for three days. And the Greeks seek by wisdom. Well, it, this gnosis, this knowledge, wisdom and Sophia is what we have here. A wisdom higher or lower, worldly or spiritual. So that's what everybody, this hidden wisdom, that's what everybody's looking for. Oh, you know, something that's just not on the surface there that's exposed for everyone to be able to pick up. We're looking for this hidden wisdom. See, that's where your um, Gnostic Gospels came from. Some kind of a hidden wisdom. And they're still trying to do it today. The Gospel of Thomas, banned from the Bible. The Gospel of Mary, banned from the Bible. It was never in the Bible. It was never in the canon because it's Gnostic. And it's like, oh, you're being deprived of something. No, you've got what you need here. God has seen to it, and he's preserved it through the ages. But we proclaim Christ being crucified to Jews indeed an obstacle of stumbling, and to the Greeks it's more honestness. This, and once again, it's this twice conquered nation, this Jew, he's the God of all. Really? That's, that's how they see this. But to, the, to these, the chosen, electos, or kletos here, invited, that is appointed specifically a saint, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, God's power, and God's wisdom. <clears throat> this is me. For the Moronish of God. And I'll gladly be called Moronish. So is wiser than the wisdom of men. Do you want to have your wisdom to be wiser than the wisdom of men? Do you want the wisdom of God? Well, we must become more honest to the things of God that he can give us his wisdom. That we would boast in God's wisdom. Not that it would build us up to a state of pride and we would say, Oh, look what I know. That's not the purpose. And the weakness of God is stronger than the strength of men. For you see your calling, brethren. There are not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many well-born. Uh, you look at people, Jordan Peterson today, he has the most skewed perspective on biblical things because he's trying to reason. He's trying to use his wisdom to couple it with the scriptures, and he's just so far off. Um, not many well-born. The Lord speaks of John the Baptist. You know, him being uh, not one that's in a king's palace, you know, arrayed in fine linen. He says those are in king's palaces, but what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yeah, and more than a prophet. You know, and he wears, what, camel's hair? What's he, lives in caves? So, not many well-born. But the more honest of the world, God chose that the wise should be disgraced. In the weak of the world, God chose that the strong should be disgraced. In the ignoble of the world, the kin, the descendants, you understand those of a heritage of some sort, to the ones being treated with contempt, God chose and the things not being that the things being should render, he should render useless. So that all flesh should not boast before him. But you are of him in Christ Jesus who became wisdom to us from God, both righteousness and sanctification and release by ransom that as it has been written, the one boasting, let him boast in the Lord. 
That's the whole purpose of this. We need to realize that we are morons of God, that God may give us his wisdom. And once again, if this offends you, you have a greater problem. You need to humble yourself, that you may receive the wisdom of Christ. Just as uh, the strength that Paul had, the Apostle Paul was diminished to nothing. And he almost became a groper. And he says, I will boast in my infirmities, gladly, so that the power of Christ may be manifest in me. Uh, the same thing applies to wisdom. We need to lose our worldly wisdom and the education that the world has thrust upon us. We need to deny that, and we need to be raised up in God's wisdom. Let us pray. Lord, we need your power, your strength, your wisdom every day, Lord, and we need to boast in our infirmities, physical and mental, Lord, that you may strengthen us, that our power may be seen to be strong in you, for it is all in you and no other. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, I love you and ask you to bless our day and be a help unto us, Lord, that we may know more of your truth, that we may retain it, that it may be useful in edification, the building up of this physical while we are here, Lord, that we may be able to give unto others, to have them built up on a sure foundation, which is in you, not in religion, not in churchianity, but in you. It is all in you, Lord Jesus. Help us to understand this, I pray in your name. Amen.